In this video, I'll show you how you can add actions and advanced actions to your drag and drop interactions. One of the viewers of my YouTube channel put a comment on quite an old video I did about drag and drop that involved adding actions and advanced actions. And their question was if it was possible to use this methodology to create a submit button that would reset the wrong answers but leave the correct answers in place. Thought about it for a while, I couldn't come up with a solution like that, but I thought at least I could come up with a solution that would allow the learners to see which of the drag and drops were incorrect and then move them to an alternate drop position and uh, of course then submit them and get the appropriate feedback. So here's the solution I came up with. Hopefully the viewer who left the original comment uh, finds this useful. Okay, so I've already set up my slide um, with a number of objects as you can see here. And I'm just gonna show you some details about what I did here. So if you take a look at my drag objects, I'm gonna select one of them and we'll go into my properties inspector and go into state view. I set up two alternate states, one that depicts correct, like we've dragged this to the correct position. I added a little extra icon with a check mark just to give it a little bit more of a visual cue to your learners that they got this particular drag and drop correct. And then I have the incorrect state where we have an X, this is the wrong answer and uh, it's suggesting to try another position. And I've done that for all four of my drag objects. So the first thing we need to do is actually set up a drag and drop here. And uh, you can do that with the uh, interactions uh, icon and select drag and drop. This will open up the drag and drop wizard. And all we need to do is select the draggable objects one by one you'll recognize the green outline around them we'll click next and drop one drop two drop three drop four next and of course the final step in the three-step process is to identify the relationship between the drags and the drops the correct relationship so drag one's going to go here you'll notice that it creates a success caption let me just move that out of the way for a moment and a failure caption as well. And drag three will go down here. Drag two will go over here. And drag four will go over there. And then we can click finish. Now this process creates a submit button. You'll notice that I've already got a submit button on my slide. This is gonna be my own custom submit function. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag the submit button that was generated by the drag and drop wizard into the scrap area. There's no way you can delete it, but you can certainly get it into the scrap area and then learners won't see that and they'll only see the submit button that I've created here. A couple of things I like to do with my drag and drops. You'll notice that I have my drop targets with the title near the top of the object. And then of course the drag items have it in the center there. So if you select your drop targets, we can do a couple of things. Uh, you could just choose one of these snap behaviors that will force this object to be towards the bottom of these drop targets there as well. You can select the drag objects. Let's do this uh, all at once here and you can select a zoom in effect. I kind of like this. It looks like you're lifting the object off the page and placing it onto the drop target as well. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to say on success, no action. Uh, we're going to give people infinite attempts in this case here. We actually don't need a failure caption because we're going to communicate that differently our success caption will stay there. And uh, we're gonna select auto submit correct answers. So we do want to auto submit when we get everything into the right spot there. Optionally, you can give them an undo button and a reset button. I won't bother in this case here, but that's something you can do as well. And the last thing I wanna do, of course, is make sure that redrag the drop source 
is selected because I want learners to be able to pick up something that was erroneously dropped into the wrong drop target and place it into the correct drop target. I'm going to change my on success message and just make it a little bit larger here and uh, just put some text in here that's appropriate for this particular interaction here. I'm just going to add some margins there just so it looks a little nicer there. That looks good. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a user variable for each of our drag objects. So we're going to go into the project drop down menu and select variables. And here we're going to add new. I'm going to call my variables underscore drag zero one. And I'm going to give it an initial value of zero. You can leave it blank, but it's a good best practice to assign something to your variables. I'll hit save there and we'll click add new. We'll do this for drag two. Drag three. And drag four. So I can go ahead and close my variables window at this point here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to select our drop targets one by one. I'll start with drop number one and we'll go to the format tab if it isn't already selected and go into object actions. So what we want to have happen is a couple of things here. We want to uncheck accept all so that we're only allowing one drag object per drop target. And I'm going to select replace instead of go back. So you can replace what might already be there with whatever you're trying to drag into that drop target. Now for each of the possible drag source types, I'm going to assign an action and I'm specifically going to assign a value to the appropriate variable here. So in this case here, uh, drag one, we're going to drop one. So drag one is the appropriate item here. We're going to go into the actions menu here and select assign. And we're going to select our user variable that we just created specifically for drag number one. So if we're dragging drag number one to drop number one, we're going to assign that variable a value of one. And we're going to uncheck continue playing the project because we want this slide to remain paused for your learners to complete the interaction. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. We're going to do the same thing for drag two, three, and four for the uh, drop variable, but we're going to assign that a value of zero. So in other words, for drag two, three, and four, those are incorrect answers. So we're going to go in and assign drag zero one with a literal value of zero. And we'll repeat that for the other two drags that are there. Assign drag one with zero. Don't forget to uncheck continue playing the project. And uh, last but not least, we'll assign a zero value for drag zero if it's to any other, anything other than drop one, basically. So we'll click on OK. We'll click on OK again. That takes care of drop one. We're going to repeat this for drop two, three, and four. So I'll select drop two. We'll go into object actions here. And just to keep it straight in my head, I'm going to do for, I'm going to set this up for drag two and then set up the distractors first. So if we're dragging to drag two with the correct drop number two, we are going to assign drag two a value of one. Uncheck that. Click OK. And we'll set up the other uh, the other items to be zero value. So we'll assign drag number two with a value of zero, uncheck continue playing the project. Same thing here. I find the more monotonous a task in Captivate, I tend to make mistakes. So take your time and make sure you do this right. 
There we go. So that's drop number two taken care of. Let's do drop number three. Click on object actions. So again, like before, I like to do the correct answer first. So we'll do number three. We will assign drag three a value of one. In other words, we're just keeping track of we got this one right. Click OK. And now I'll just do assign drag number three a value of zero. Uncheck continue playing the project, of course. And repeat this for the remaining two items there. Value of zero, uncheck continue playing the project. Assign, drag three, zero. It helps to say it out loud like I'm doing right now. And last but not least, let's do number four. So we'll go to object actions, uncheck accept all, count as one, replace. And for this one here, we will assign drag four with a value of one. Uncheck continue playing the project, click OK. And then we'll do our distractors here. Assign, drag four, zero. Assign, drag four, zero. Uncheck that. Assign, I know this part's boring. Okay, we're done. So we'll click on okay. That's probably the most uh, complicated in that it's repetitive and it would be easy to mess up. So what we wanna do at this point is we wanna write an advanced action. I set the on success action to no action. That was just really me being, you know, temper uh, making a temporary uh, selection here. Uh, to remind myself to do this. But what I want to do now is I want to create my advanced action that I'm going to set for the on success action of the drag and drop, but also for my custom submit button as well. So let's go ahead into the project drop down menu, select advanced actions, and we'll write our advanced action for the submits, if you will. So in this case here, I'm going to call it fake submit, but you can literally call this whatever you like, as long as it isn't a reserved word. And we're going to do a series of conditional advanced actions. So we'll take care of drag one first. And I'll just type in drag zero one here. And we're going to look at our variable. So if our variable drag zero one is equal to the literal value of one, what does that mean, right? Think about that for a second. It means that I've dragged drag zero one into drop zero one. I've got it correct. If it's anything other than one, it would be incorrect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the state of my drag object to one of these two alternate states that I created before the video. So in this case here, we're gonna choose correct spot. Now I'm gonna copy this line. You almost don't need to, because it's so simple. And paste it down into the else section and simply change this last item to incorrect. So let's recap here. So we're gonna check the value of our variable. If it's equal to one, We've dragged the drag object to the correct drop target, and we're gonna change the appearance of the drag object to let our learners know that that is a correct choice. If it's not equal to one, we're gonna show the incorrect spot message. So you've dragged this to the wrong spot, right? Now, the easy I have to do this three more times. The easiest way to do that is to click on the duplicate decision. We'll change the title of this to drag two, we'll change which variable we're looking at here. So we're looking at drag two, if it's equal to one, we're gonna change drag two to correct or change drag two to incorrect again, depending on the circumstances. We'll duplicate this again. We'll set this up for drag three. If drag three is equal to one. We're going to change drag three to look correct 
Or if it's not, we'll change drag three to look incorrect. Let's duplicate it once more for number four. And we're again looking at the variable associated with drag four. If it's equal to one, we'll change drag four, the object, not the variable, to the correct message and change drag four to the incorrect if it's not equal to one. That's it, you know, and you could further customize this if you wanted to change the appearance of other objects on the slide or if you wanted to build a custom feedback message, you could do that, but I'm gonna keep it simple for our purposes here. I'm gonna save this as an action, click OK, and now we can click Close. We're gonna change the on success action for our drag and drop to be the fake submit. And we're gonna do the same thing for this shape used as a button that I've placed on the slide here. We'll go to actions and we'll execute advanced actions and make sure that fake submit is selected there if you have other uh, advanced actions here. By the way, if you're a Downloads member of my YouTube channel, you'll be able to download this project file completely built as it is right here, and you'll be able to use it however you wish, deconstruct it, and so on. Let's preview this now and make sure it works as expected. So I'm gonna click on Preview, HTML5 in browser. Okay, so here's our drag and drop. Let's get it wrong first. We'll drag three to one, we'll drag Drag one to two, we'll get one right. We'll put drag four in the right spot and I'll put this in drag three. We'll hit submit. So you can clearly see which ones are incorrect. Now remember, I selected redrag the dropped targets or dropped source. So we can actually take this and move it to another position. Because I've limited the number of objects to each drop target, it sends drag three back here. This is drag two, I know it goes over here. And drag three now belongs here. And it auto submits, I set that up and I get my message there and you're good to go. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.